I'm going to start this video with a magic trick. This is a typical UK switch that you can find on the wall to toggle lights. And I have new son of basic R4 which made this trick possible. Right. So you probably wonder how I did it. Well, let's roll the video. Hey guys, unfortunately I'm not that good of a magician and it wasn't a sleight of hand. It was done in a post-editing and I was, well, cheating a little bit. This is Son of Esmate 2, which is also going to be covered in this video, but let's start from the beginning. And it all started from the email I received from IT at saying that they're going to release some new Son of devices. Now that my computer is quiet, we can continue. I wasn't sure which devices they're going to receive, so when I've opened the box, I've seen Smate 2 and Son of Basic R4. I got really excited because a lot of different Son of devices lately been upgraded, and they had new design, mainly Extreme Series and the Elite Series, which I covered in here. So yeah, it was about the time to bring the humble Son of Basic to modern standards. But when I actually opened the box and they discovered that the Son of Basic R4 uses the shell from Son of Basic from five years ago, I got slightly disappointed. I mean, at least they could have used the shell from the previous series, the R3, which looked more modern. But as the changes are mainly on the inside, it's still worth talking about. After all, that humble Son of Basic was a key a device in my home automation because I've used that $5 device to actually automate my smart heating and make it really awesome. The whole video process is in here and I would urge you to check it out to maybe draw some inspiration from it. On the surface, some of R4 looks the same as the Sono from five years ago. However, if you look closely at the label, there are some differences. First of all, you have certification. You have the C mark and FCC marks as standard. You no longer have to wait until those are being supplied and the actual device is electrically certified. So that is always nice to see. And after exchanging a couple of words with the PR person from IT, I also discovered that move to reuse the shells from previous generation was to bring the price of the Sonoff down. So now this is how much you have to pay for the Sonoff Basic R4, which makes it by far one of the cheapest relay to actually you can deploy in your home automation. That's great. But it is still the single channel relay which allows you to connect up to 10 amps of load and will automate most of your devices at home. I know mine's already connected, but before I'm gonna give you an overview about EVLink, Tasmota and possible matter integrations, let's actually peek inside and see what has changed. The entire board has actually been redesigned and this time around it's built around the ESP32 C3, which is probably another argument for bringing the price down since they don't have to pay the license for it. And since the ESP C3 is much newer, it offers hardware advantages, so you have a better Wi-Fi connectivity, you have a Bluetooth 5.0 and compatibility with Matter. That's nice. Now on the PCB you can also see a dedicated header for flashing this thing, so you have the very familiar BCC, RX, TX and Ground, which is gonna be definitely useful, but the positioning of this means that I could expose that header with the use of 90 degree pins to the side which then I can use it in the same vein as I did with my home automation setup in which I simply connected a small DHT11 temperature sensor directly to the Sonoff and used it as a thermostat. The push button uses one of those long razors, so be delicate around it because they are very easy to destroy and it's linked to the relay and probably doubles as a uh, button for the flash mode. However, since this is ESP32 C3, it's not going to be linked to GPS00. We're gonna have to look into the documentation for that to confirm. Now it pairs instantly, and this is the benefit of actually having a newer ESP inside. So I had no problem there. Within a couple of seconds, I had it linked to my EWLink account. Since then, it was plain sailing. This is a single channel relay, so the only options we've got on and off, hello son of, and the standard sets of features coming from EWLink app, including schedules, timers, loops, and dedicated settings for the son of basic R4. So Son of Basic R4 supports uh, local LAN. You can also use inching and default power on behavior with various delays. That's nice to see. 
But other than that, there isn't really anything else. As the name suggests, it's some of basic. Now, if you want to enable the integration with voice assistants, you have two routes to go with. First one is to link the eWilling skill to your Alexa Google Home. The second route is to maybe take advantage of eWilling API. I know they've been updating it uh, lately and the Node-RED eWilling API node is not playing the game, but I hope that's going to be updated very soon too. Whether I was using some of basic R4 via a cloud or via local network, it was lightning fast in terms of response time, uh, regardless whether I issued the command from the cloud itself, from the app, or I used the button and waited for the cloud to update the status. So either way, you're going to have a good experience. Uh, it's something I came to expect from eWilling after all, so yeah, there's no problem there. But one of the new options not present on the original basic was the ability to use eWilling Remote, a protocol that is being utilized by the second device I've got, which is some of S-Mate 2. It's not the first S-Mate that I have in my hands, and basically it's a battery-operated device that connects behind a wall switch like this. This has actually ability to connect to up to three gangs and even serve a different uh, clicks, so I'm going to explain that in a second. But basically it's a RF-based device that issues commands from this small device to compatible Sonom devices. And as R4 is one of the compatible devices, let's hook it up. Connecting S-Mates 2 is simple, especially that they've included cables and that really fancy Wago style adapter, which they also sell now, so that's nice to see in action. And within seconds I was able to add that sub-device to my Sonom Basics R4 and give it a go. Now if you pay closer attention, on the side of the S-Mate 2 there is a small toggle switch which allows you physically to change how the device is going to respond. In one operation it's going to be working with the push button uh, switches, in the other mode it's for toggles. Now depending on what you've selected you also have different activities available in Automation tab. Now if you selected a push button then you'll have click, double click and long press. Now for toggles, well, the options are less fancy. But one thing to keep in mind, after pairing this thing, the process isn't automatic, so you have to go to eWilling app, to the Automation tab, and set up your automation separately for each channel on this device. I've opened this up as well to take a look, but there wasn't really anything worth of mentioning other than the uses 3 volt logic to uh, detect the changes of the inputs, and it uses the bigger battery available on the latest Son of Zigbee devices. You can take a look in here. So that's 1000 milliamps uh, coin cell battery supposed to last up to five years with this device. So it's a really nice idea if you just want to automate the switch, which is really awkward because at the end of the day, all you have to do is just connect it to a wall switch and you can terminate your um, wires that are already in that box and you don't have to use them. So that's an option, especially for everyone that doesn't have a neutral in behind the wall switch. So great to see it as an option. But I know what you want to see. You want to see it's a small time, you want to see matter on this. and. Uh, First, uh, news about Matter. Some have confirmed that they're not going to enable Matter for this device right now. I don't know if there are any plans. There's a hardware to support that, but uh, as of now, Matter isn't supported despite having this nice uh, small QR code on the side. So I was thinking, like, how about I'm going to flash it with the latest version of Tasmata compatible with ESP C3 and try to enable Matter that way. So and um, with that knowledge, I started to modify my um, Sonoff Basic R3 to add that header I've mentioned. After soldering 4-pin female header to the existing pads, I've bent it 90 degrees and all I had to do is just use a hot knife to carve out a nice little poking hole, which then I can uh, use as a socket. To make things less confusing, I also used a small uh, label printer to add the labels so I know what that exactly is and which cables I should be connecting without opening the device uh, once again. So that was very useful. But when that was modified, all I had to do really is just start flashing it. And uh, this time I decided to use the web uh, installer, which is very handy for all the latest ESP based devices. So that's something I'm using going forward. And I've selected the ESP32 C3 from the drop down menu, and then I connected my FTD flasher. It never failed me, so I'm just going to link it down below if you want to get one for yourself. 
But before we're gonna go any further, there's a couple of things that you should know. First of all, do not use main powers to power your son off while you're doing it. This is just asking for trouble. Second of all, unless you're going to back up existing firmware using ESP tools, uh, you're going to lose that firmware and you won't be able to refresh it back to go back to your Link account. So make that decision now. If you want to have it, then use the backup option using ESP tools. I have a video about it, so just go and search in my channel about that and you'll be able to generate the bin file with a backup firmware in case you want to go back. You're also doing it at your own risk, so if something goes wrong, don't blame me. It works for me. Don't know, might not work for you. And lastly, you will lose the access to eWilink Remote. To my knowledge, eWilink Remote is not supported using Tasmota, so yeah, you'll have to sacrifice that. Sorry. As I already had my header sorted and flushed, connecting this thing was a piece of cake. VCC to 3.3 volts, RX to TX, TX to RX, and ground to ground. Be sure that your FTD is set to 3.3 volts, as mine can be also set to 5 volts. Otherwise, you may end up damaging your ESP. Once everything connected and you have drivers for your FTD, hold down the button on your son of R4 while you're plugging it into power to enable flash mode. That way you'll be able to connect to it and start flashing. Now the flash process takes approximately two minutes and it's pretty much straightforward. Just make sure you select correct board from the drop-down list. If that wasn't successful on your part, there's a couple troubleshooting steps that you can try. First of all, check if you connected everything correctly. Some of the FTD flashers, they might have the TX and RX labels swapped over, so try swapping those wires. Uh, secondly, try the power supply. Some of the USB ports might not be able to deliver enough power, and that could be your demise. So if you suspect that you don't have enough current in your USB port, try to power it from something else while using your computer to option, or obviously flash it. Do not use the main power. Once flashed, all I had to do is just replug the device to my USB port. I actually didn't really have to connect it to mains powers to set it up either. So it's a um, tip for you. If you have a good USB port, you can just keep it connected and set up your Tasmota. Once it's up and running, then uh, look for the SSID created by Tasmota. We'll say Tasmota and you'll have to just connect to it and then navigate to the IP 192.168.4 one to enter the Tasmota configuration menu from which you'll be able to select the Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi uh, and log into it. Then after a couple of moments it should display the IP that your device is registered to and then you can start configuring your device. Now obviously I'm already going to submit the template that you can use on my website so check out the link in the description of this video to copy and paste it, but I did have some problems actually mapping things out because it's a new device and, uh, well, things needed to be figured out. After trial and many errors, I discovered that the relay is connected to GPIO 4, the LED is connected to GPIO 6, and the button, despite me trying everything, well, it wasn't working at first. I don't know what went wrong, but the only way I could actually fix it was by reflushing the device again upon which I discovered that it's not GPIO 00 as on all the sort of devices. On ESP32 C3, it requires to be on either GPIO 08 or GPIO 09, and in this case, it was on GPIO 09 according to the specification. So that's why I did. Restarted it again, and voila, it was working. Now that we've done all that flashing, you're probably wondering about that matter option in Tasmota menu and how hard it is to use. So I've quick, it was my first time using it, so I was curious as well. So I quickly pressed on that configuration to display QR code. That was simple enough. And I went through the entire yeah, process of adding a matter device to my Alexa ecosystem, which was easy and it worked straight up. I didn't really have to do anything. Encouraged by that, I decided to do the same for Google Home and that didn't work. Looking at the Tasmota documentation, I quickly found out that we'll have to go to developer console for my Google account registered my, with my Google Home and add certification for the matter device that is a Tasmota because it's not certified by Google and as such, it cannot be paired. So I followed the instructions from the Tasmota website to add a new project and certify Tasmota as a matter device, uh, after which I was actually able to go through the uh, process of pairing my new matter device to Google Home. At this point, I was almost excited because it was that simple and suddenly I can use that son of device with matter support and still have an access to REST and MQTT. 
but my excitement was hindered by the fact that the device is constantly showing as offline in Google Home. At this point, I don't know what the problem is, so if you have a suggestion for me to try, leave it in the comment section and I'll definitely give it a go and update the article. So if you're watching this video now and if you want to see if I had any solution to this, go to the uh, article, the write-up linked in the description and uh, see for any updates, if any. So hopefully I'll find out soon how to fix this problem and I'll be able to use a son of R4 some of basic R4 in my Google Home ecosystem as well. Fortunately, I use Alexa's ecosystem around the house, so I won't have any problems anytime soon with that device and this version of Tasmota, which is great. So in conclusion, it might be humble, it might be simple, but thanks to the inclusion of massive compatibility hardware-wise, you can turn this son of basic into a Tasmota Matter compatible device for your home automation and connect to it with anything you want. And all of that comes to you at lower price, which is great. So yeah, if you're interested, guys, check it out in the description. You'll find the links to the new de son of devices. And let me know what would you like to see on the channel next. I'm definitely going to listen to your feedback for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.